We've told you a whole lot of stuff today about what's wrong. Yep. Now we're going to spend some time on some things you can do about it, something in particular. Beverly Ekman is an educator, an author, and a nationally known speaker with so many awards and honors, there's simply not enough time today to mention them all. She's the executive director of the National Education Consortium and has served as a speechwriter for such diverse organizations as the U.S. Department of Justice and the Voice of America. Her expertise, her passion, is in saving our children from mind engineering in the public classrooms. But she comes to us today with a very special purpose. Beverly has become a recognized expert on how to counter group manipulation tactics. In fact, she has a day-long seminar on the subject, and she's got a catalog back there, a, a manual back there that uh, will give you a lot of those details. Now, what you may ask, does group manipulation have to do with sustainable development? Well, I think we probably already learned that today. It has everything to do with it. You see, one can't transform the United States of America away from liberty to totalitarianism without, with uh, using Robert's Rules of Orders. The gameplay today in almost every public meeting from local councils to congressional committee meetings is consensus. A professional facilitator is used to herd the group to a predetermined outcome. Consensus is their secret weapon, and Beverly knows how to mess it up. <laughs> Today, she joins us to give a quick one-hour overview of her tactics. Beverly Ekman. Thank you, Tom. Well, are you ready to fight after that last presentation? <laughs> How many of you have had the demoralizing experience of being labeled a troublemaker as soon as you question or raise an objection to a policy, regulation, proposal, or teaching method? Mm, quite a few of you, I see. Okay. <laughs> well, being seen as uncooperative is a no-no, as you've probably figured out. Sometimes you may even wind up in an out-and-out -out confrontation when all you meant to do was inject a different viewpoint. Unfortunately, most laypersons, and sometimes even legislators, don't realize they're dealing with well-trained provocateurs the minute they set foot in a room with folks who are chairing a meeting. These chairpersons may pretend to be just facilitators and moderators of a discussion, but they're not. To have your view heard and taken seriously, you must know first how to recognize psychological manipulation and work around it. You need to take the debate away from your adversary and argue the question on your terms, not on your opponent's terms. To do this requires that you master certain principles of argument and be able to apply them in a group setting and under pressure. For reasons you'll understand shortly, it's easier to control a group than a single individual. Now, that may seem strange, but it's actually the reason behind attempts to collectivize people, suppress their individuality, as per Michael Shaw's comment earlier on. Unethical facilitators, like the ones with an uh, ulterior motive, will try to maneuver you first into a group setting, and that's your first giveaway that you're dealing with a pro. Or as I'll be using the term here, a provocateur, a change agent, an agitator, but basically a provocateur. The group is used by this provocateur to help combat any potential adversary by isolating you, ridiculing you, ostracizing you, and finally overwhelming you. Attorneys, media commentators, and journalists are among the few who get the training that I'm going to give you. Most of us are caught up in the idea that there's always strength in numbers and that that's the best way to get through to an adversary via a one-on-one -on -one discussion. Both are true only if people are honestly debating the issue as equals, but it's not true if the debate is dishonest. If a provocateur can generate a mob mentality and get it to work for him, well, he has control of the agenda. And that's rule number two. Never let the other fellow 
conduct the agenda and control the agenda. And by the way, that's how your kids get caught up in all sorts of nastiness, from falling for the hype over trashy artists like Eminem to competing to look like hookers and pimps in school. The teacher, who nowadays functions as an agent of change before all else, deliberately heightens peer pressure so that it functions as a mob mentality. Once that occurs, ideas can be planted and get, that go against 2,000 years of civilization. Both children and adults will accept them for no other reason than that it's fashionable. Of course, children are typically undiscerning and have no experience with hardcore manipulation tactics. Too many parents today have been convinced by experts that authoritarianism and uh, individualism are bad. After nearly 45 years of this nonsense, most of us are ill-equipped to stand up for our principles, much less teach our kids how to do so. We fear being censured and insulted. When we feel cornered, we may sound hysterical, raise our voices, and ensure our doom. The key to remember is that the provocateur gets the group to do the dirty work for him. The mob mentality is achieved by creating what is known in the vernacular of experts as a psychologically controlled environment. You will want to disrupt, or better yet, preempt the establishment of a psychologically controlled environment. Failing that, you will need to understand the strategies and techniques that a provocateur uses to assure the outcome he or she wants so that you can counter these techniques as you go and get others in the group to help you, whether they understand what you're doing or not. In other words, you have to beat the provocateur at his or her own game. So, the first principles you need to be clear about to mount an effective campaign that will neutralize the provocateur's consensus building strategies are, it's easier to control a group than to control a single individual, Never let the other fellow control the debate or agenda, and watch out for the psychologically controlled environment. These are the core principles of controlling a discussion. The rest of the principles we will take up may appear at first glance to apply only to physical wars, but they're key to any kind of battle, including psychological warfare. Let's examine some of the strategic principles from an ancient Chinese text. The Art of War, thought to have been written about 476 BC. This little book has received renewed attention since 9-11, but few recognize it as the principles of psych war. An army cannot be run according to the rules of etiquette. Those skilled in war subdue the enemy without battle. Deception and surprise are two key principles of battle. The enemy's leaders must be confused, if possible, driven insane. That's actually how he said it, Sun Tzu, way back in 476 BC. From just these four principles, you can see that demoralization of the enemy was a high priority even back then. Our opponents today have used these four strategies against the populace with tremendous success. The first task, then, of professional agitation is to create the psychologically controlled environment. This makes it easier for one side to frame the debate and to keep the opposition, that's you, from doing so. A psychologically controlled environment provides a platform from which to operate and prevents people like you from injecting another viewpoint or worse yet, redirecting the discussion. The consensus generated from such a forum typically is taken to your legislators and presented as what the community really wants. This sets up a kind of mass neurosis because people like you know the consensus isn't true. Yet the lie is presented by reputable sources that are believed. This leads to a psychological condition known as cognitive dissonance, meaning an irreconcilable conflict has been set up. As people become uncomfortable, you see, they vacillate. They lose their frame of reference, become alienated. An alienated electorate, particularly if it's the backbone of a community, 
helps the provocateur because it effectively gets the primary resistance out of the way. Another take on this game